So I finished my thesis. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome! If you've been keeping up with my videos for a while, then you are probably aware that I have been working on my master's thesis for a very long time. <laughs> but I finally submitted it a couple of weeks ago, I defended it in my lab, and I passed! <laughs> and a while back, uh brianna or brianna i'm sorry if i'm saying your name wrong but you asked me if i could do a video on how to write a thesis and i promised i would so here it is <laughs> now that i have finished mine i can finally kind of give some input or insight or tips or whatever you want to call it and have it not be like me talking out my ass so <laughs> so today i'm just gonna be giving some tips on how uh, to write a master's thesis. Before I start though, I want to be clear that I am talking about how to write a master's thesis, not a dissertation. I know in some PhD programs, those terms are used interchangeably, they're synonymous with one another, but in the case of most clinical psych PhD programs, they are not the same thing. You have your master's thesis, which is usually done within your first two years of the program, and then you have your dissertation, which is like the big boy. It's the big boss at the end of the video game. <laughs> so think of a master's thesis as more of like a dissertation light, if you will. <laughs> it's typically less work, less rigorous, less time consuming, uh, depending on what kind of research you're doing, but it's a requirement nonetheless. I also want to clarify that this video is going to be giving tips on how to write your thesis, not how to conduct your thesis. So nothing to do with the actual like research portion of your thesis, what you do and how you conduct your study or studies will be entirely dependent on the kind of research you're doing, what lab you're in, like, you know, all of that. So anyway, now that that's cleared up, we can just get started. So the first tip I have for you is probably the first thing you should do. It's something I didn't originally do that I really wish I would have, but that is to create a timeline for yourself. Create a timeline at the very big, like the minute you know you're about to start working on your thesis, create a timeline for yourself, especially if you have like a deadline by which you have to get your thesis done. Um, like I did <laughs> definitely want to like sit down and like create a very rough timeline of when you want to have certain parts of your study or your research or your paper done and when you're creating the timeline try to set a deadline for yourself that is earlier than the actual deadline by which you have to get your research done just because with the way research works things happen, stuff comes up, you know, things interrupt the work you're doing, and chances are you're gonna have to extend your deadline multiple times. So setting an earlier deadline for yourself uh, will give you a little bit more wiggle room in case you have to extend it for one reason or another. Um, now, if you stick to your original deadline that you set for yourself and like you meet all of your like timeline goals, kudos to you. <laughs> but I know for me, my original plan was to get my thesis done like nine months ago uh, and that didn't happen. <laughs> Basically having a rough timeline will help you stay on track but if done right then it'll also give you a little bit of like wiggle room and leeway in case you have to amend or extend your timeline for whatever reason. The second thing I highly, highly, highly recommend, it's basically a requirement. If you have not written a psychology research format paper before, then you need to learn APA format. All psychology papers are written in APA format. So if you don't already know it, you will have to know it by the time you start working on your thesis. The good thing though is that you don't have to have it memorized. One of my favorite resources to use, and this is probably common knowledge at this point um if it's not i don't know but one of my favorite favorite resources to use is the owl at purdue they have like an entire apa formatting guide on their website as well as formatting guides for other citation styles but apa format is what you will need to know and they have an entire formatting guide 
Uh, they have it in like a book form that you can buy, but I don't know anyone who has ever bought the book version. Basically, everything you need to know for the purposes of writing a paper are is free on their website. Whenever I'm writing a paper, I literally have Owlette Purdue open the entire time and I'm constantly checking it to make sure that everything I do is correct. Um, because APA formatting is very particular, it's very finicky. There are like very little things that you wouldn't think matter, but matter a lot. <laughs> and so that is your best resource for making sure that you are adhering to APA format when you are writing. As far as like how to organize your paper, that will also largely depend on the kind of work that you're doing, but the basic sections of any research paper are your introduction and lit review, your methods section, your results section, and your discussion section. Each of those sections within themselves can have subsections, but what those subsections are, again, will depend a lot on what kind of research you're doing and how you want to organize your paper. The third thing you wanna do is conduct a very thorough lit review or as thorough of a lit review as you can manage in the time that you have. Start early, basically as soon as you know what you want to be researching, start your lit review. You want to make sure that you give yourself enough time to really dive into the research and the literature to see what's already been done. You also want to make sure that you are reading every single article, every single paper, every single chapter, whatever you are pulling for your lit review, you want to make sure that you're reading it all the way through. No skimming. No skimming allowed when doing your lit review. Well. Skimming is allowed to just like determine whether or not a paper is relevant to your research. But if you are, if you skim the paper and see, oh, this is relevant to my research, then you want to make sure that you come back to that article or whatever later on and read it thoroughly. You never want to include a paper in your lit review that you have not read. Okay. <laughs> I know. A lot of times in undergrad or maybe even grad school, I was guilty of this a couple of times, we're writing a paper and we don't want to read the paper all the way through so we kind of just skim it for the really important parts that we want to include and then we just add it to our citation list. Um, you don't want to do that for your thesis. <laughs> you don't want to do that when it comes to your own research um, that is very dangerous because you could very easily include a paper that completely like disproves everything you're trying to prove with your research if you don't read it carefully enough um, and if you're including papers that contradict your own research but you're using them as support for your research that's a little it's a little funky um, so no skimming whatsoever. You want to make sure that any paper you include in your lit review, any paper that you include in your references is a paper that you have read start to finish. The next thing I recommend, which was a lifesaver for me because I had a lot of papers that I used in my lit review, is to use a reference organizer. Like I said, APA format is very, very particular um, and using a reference organizer like RefWorks or EndNote, um, Zotero, I love Zotero, oh my God. Zotero is amazing. Google Zotero, download it and you won't need anything else, I promise. <laughs> But yeah, using a reference organizer will save you a lot of time and annoyance when it comes to creating your reference list when you're done writing. However, whenever you're using these reference organizers, you wanna make sure that your citation settings are set to the most recent version of APA, which right now I think is seventh edition. And you always want to double check your citations once you export them, um, just because these are computerized programs, they are not perfect, they make mistakes too, and sometimes a period might not be in the right place or a word that isn't supposed to be capitalized will be capitalized. And so always just cross check your exported citations against the APA formatting guide just to make sure that everything is copacetic. <laughs> Next is probably the best advice I've ever gotten and I'm passing it on to you because it is literally a gem and I feel like everyone should know this. Use class papers 
as an opportunity to write parts of your thesis. Do your best to not just write a paper for class for the sake of writing the paper for the class. If possible, do not write any papers that you cannot eventually use as part of your thesis. Any midterm paper, any final paper for a class, you want to see if there is any way, shape, or form that you can use that paper to write something that will help contribute to your paper for your thesis or your dissertation later on. I got this little bit of advice right before I started grad school and it was probably literally the best thing I've ever done when it comes to schoolwork. Not only will this make your life so much easier because you won't have to be doing multiple different types of research at once, but this will also give you a chance to get some feedback on your writing that you can then use later on when you're revising and improving on your paper. And finally, the last tip I have for you is when you're writing, I feel like it's easier to proofread as you go as opposed to proofreading all at once at the end. It can get really annoying, especially for someone like me who hates reading your own writing. Um, but proofreading as you go when you're writing your thesis will help you keep track of kind of the flow of your paper and make sure that it sounds like it makes sense and that it's flowing in the way you want it to flow. I also like to proofread my papers out loud instead of in my head just because I know for myself that sometimes the way I phrase sentences in my head doesn't always sound completely coherent once it's being read out loud and so proofreading out loud will help you catch those weird like grammar and syntax type things that you might not catch if you're reading it in your own head and like your head voice. If you're using Microsoft Word to write, I know that recently they released a feature where you can have a document be read to you. And so I've also used that lately um, to help me catch some grammar and spelling mistakes. And so once you're done writing and you've proofread everything, I also recommend proofreading it again, like a second, third, and maybe even fourth time after some time has gone by. When you're proofreading things like right after you've written it, I've kind of realized that basically what you've kind of thought about and put on the paper is still very fresh in your mind. And so even if you've made a mistake while typing it, in your mind, it'll still register as what you intended to put on the paper because it's still lingering. So you won't always catch like grammar mistakes or spelling mistakes because all of that will still be very fresh in your mind as you intended to write it. So once you're done, kind of save it and put it away. Don't look at it for a few hours, maybe even a day or two if you have that much time and then come back to it once everything has kind of like left your mind and do another like review of it. And I promise you, you will catch mistakes that you did not catch before. The number of times this has happened to me, there was actually, I actually did this for my thesis and still managed to not catch a couple of mistakes that my advisor pointed out to me in my paper. And I was like, yikes. Yeah, you want to proofread as many times as you can. And the longer you wait between your proofreading sessions, the more mistakes you will catch. So yeah, that is pretty much it. There are probably a lot more tips I could have given. Any other kind of tips I could probably give would very much vary depending on what kind of research you're doing. So I thought that these were kind of like the most crucial of the bunch that could apply across the board. So yeah, thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Leave me a comment telling me about your thesis or your dissertation. Let me know what your research is about. I love hearing about other people's research. I could do a video about what my research is on if that's something that you'd be interested in. Um, if not, totally fine. It will probably bore most of you. But yeah, let me know what your research is about if you're doing research because um, I just want to hear what everyone has going on right now. I'm kind of nosy. So yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, as always, like, comment, subscribe, and click that little notification bell so you don't miss my next upload, and I'll see you in my next one.